Over the weekend, Mitt Romney gave what was, for him, a pretty candid speech. And that was because it wasn't given to you or to me or to the press. It was given to donors at a fundraising event in Palm Beach. The reason we know some of the details of his remarks is that NBC's Garrett Haake and, uh, and a reporter from The Wall Street Journal were outside the event and they overheard the Romneys talking to said donors. Now, donors can be lied to just like voters can be, but there's also a certain kind of informal intimacy that comes from these events where people are cutting the big checks. So some of the things Romney said at this fundraiser, he said he'd consolidate the Department of Education with another agency or make it smaller, but he wouldn't get rid of it entirely. Ann Romney talked about how she loved, absolutely loved being criticized as a mother by Hillary Rosen. She called it, quote, an early birthday president. But one thing that caught my ear was Mitt Romney's remark about the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD. Quote, Things like housing and urban development, which my dad was head of, that might not be around later. Federal agencies and cabinet positions come in roughly two varieties, the kinds everyone knows and all the other ones. If you pay any attention to politics, you have heard of the State Department, the Department of Defense, the Justice Department, and chances are you've also heard of the Treasury, and you know who's running them, Hillary Clinton, Leon Panetta, Eric Holder, and Timothy Geithner. Then there are the less well-known, less popular federal agencies, the Department of Interior, say, or Transportation, which don't quite get the headlines the other ones do. But down near the very bottom of the federal agencies list is the one Mitt Romney is toying with scrapping, housing and urban development. And Romney is not the only prominent Republican to treat HUD like a throwaway. Ronald Reagan cared so little about HUD, he couldn't even recognize the man he would put in charge of running it. Quote, Early in his presidency at a White House reception, Reagan greeted the only black member of his cabinet, Housing and Urban Development, Urban Development Secretary Samuel Pierce, saying, How are you, Mr. Mayor? I'm glad to meet you. How are things in your city? Now, the reason Reagan couldn't recognize his own HUD secretary and the reason a Republican presidential candidate might want to get rid of HUD actually relates in an important way to why Mitt Romney was leveling, again, for Mitt Romney, with the people he was speaking to at his Palm Beach fundraiser. Because the people at the fundraiser are powerful people who support Romney needs, while the people who depend on HUD are not. The people who depend on HUD are largely urban dwellers, and urban dwellers are disproportionately non-white and disproportionately Democrats. And so HUD is an easy target for any Republican that comes to office. They can go after it, secure in the knowledge that most of the pain will be visited upon folks that don't have much power and don't vote for them anyway. This is part and parcel of the overall Republican vision, as embodied in Congressman Paul Ryan's budget, to take a hatchet to those programs that most benefit the poor and to eliminate nearly all of the federal government that is not defense or spending on senior citizens by the year 2050. But here's the thing I find particularly galling about toying with the notion of getting rid of HUD. Let's take a step back and remember where we are right now. The economy is still recovering from the worst recession we've had since the 1930s. The worst recession was precipitated by the worst financial crisis we've had since the 1930s, which was precipitated by the worst housing bubble. And that housing bubble was precipitated by both deregulation and housing policy. Housing and housing policy, making sure that we have enough that's affordable but don't drive a consumption bubble, is actually not just a tangential bit of policy that you can lop off or forget about. It has actually proven to be something that's extremely important to get right. And in fact, what we've seen in the Obama administration is a battle behind the scenes between the Treasury Department and HUD over housing policy, specifically how to get out of the housing crisis and deal with foreclosures. A battle that Treasury has been winning with terrible results for homeowners and the economy, but great results for the banks. In the 1960s, it basically took nothing less than rioting for the political establishment to pay attention to cities. HUD was established in 1965, and politicians did eventually pay attention. Everyone had to come up with a platform, a vision, even Republicans, of how they were going to address the urban question. Today, those voters can be safely ignored by the national political establishment and particularly by the Republican Party. That's why Mitt Romney can say to his donors, when he thinks no one else is listening, that he may just get rid of the government agency that sees to the needs of people who live in cities. The agency that works to make sure that people People who are not typically in attendance at Palm Beach fundraisers have some semblance of a fair shake when it comes to housing policy. But beyond the questions of fairness and urban policy, there's the wider issue that we were supposed to have learned in the wake of the financial crisis. 
Economic problems are like a contagious virus. They may start in one small, marginalized population, but they do not stay there. They spread. So even if you think it's okay to ignore the problems of the poor or the urban working class because they may not be your constituency, that decision will probably come back to haunt you. The constituencies that most rely on HUD are the same communities that served as a petri dish for the subprime lending virus, and we all saw how that ended up. A government that is unresponsive to an entire subsection of its society, that believes it does not need to listen to or serve the marginalized, is a government that will be doomed to repeated failure and crisis.